Sisters. Thanks again for um, stopping by, checking us out. We are Believe. We're a conscious media company. We like to talk about um, money and business, health and wellness, true success, our universe, and world news. You can check us out at believe.love or on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash believe loves you. Today we're going to jump into um, a few different topics here, all of which um, I'm really, really excited about. It's really some really good stuff, um, some interesting stuff, of course, always kind of controversial stuff, um, but let's get into it. All right. If you are <laughs> anything like myself, um, if you're anything like myself, then you may have had some issues um, with budgeting money in the past or still to this day. Yeah. It's, cur- it's, it's, it's a really curious, I guess, situation. Why is it that some of us, you know, are great at managing money while some of us just are not? While there are many factors that I believe we can discuss, Um, when it comes to answering that question, we're only gonna focus um, solely on what it is that we can do, habits that we can change, and really analyzing what other successful people have done in the past and what they would recommend. Hopefully we can end this conversation feeling a little better about money. All right, so with money and business, why can't I budget myself? So it's truly no secret that millionaires have different habits qualities and they have different ways of thinking than the average person. Those habits are most prevalent when it comes to the ways that they manage their money. They have a unique way of thinking that actually helps them earn even more money by making wise financial uh, decisions. For instance, um, they're not compulsive. How many times have you gone to the grocery store for one item and then end up like buying five? This happens to me all the time. I truly have to talk myself through, um, okay, what are we gonna buy today? Don't overspend. And I still somehow, of course, I always end up overspending. I'm just, I'm one of those buyers. I really am. I'll go and I'll be like, ooh, I want that, ooh, I want that. And it's not good. It's really not healthy. Um, And you can't save that way. You can't save with that mentality. They're also known, um, they also know, I'm sorry, the difference between wants and needs. They truly, truly get that. They truly, uh, millionaires, they're constantly putting their money towards essential items, things that they will somehow get something back in return, that you know they continue to increase their wealth. That's the only important thing. We know that they have multiple sources of income as well. We know that's another thing that millionaires, you know, successful people all kind of have in common. They usually focus on the long-term goal. They kind of see past everything else that's right in front of them. They understand that their daily goals should connect or at least reflect what their long-term goals are. So, you know, if you want to be, I don't know, a gymnast, you want to be an athlete, you can't spend every day sitting on your couch eating potato chips, right? You're not, what you're doing every day is not working towards your goal. So, you know, I think that's something that we all could definitely work on more is with every little thing that we do, every little activity that we partake in, ask yourself that question. Is this helping or hurting my goal? Am I working on something? Am I losing something? Constantly ask yourself that. I think that alone makes us better people and possibly will gear you towards success. But how do we do these things, right? It's like, we can talk about it. We can be like, yeah, they do this, they do that, and they, they have a different understanding, but truly, How do we do these things if we're having trouble simply budgeting? If we can't even get past that hump, you know, how are we possibly going to be able to get, um, you know, to to that other, that other uh, milestone? So if we're having trouble just simply budgeting our weekly paychecks, you know, how do we go from barely getting out of, you know, getting up to living comfortably and, you know, really um, receiving residual, residual revenue? Let's start with the 70-30 rule. I know I've talked about this before, and many of us, I'm sure, have heard about this uh, concept. But if you're not implementing this, then you're truly doing yourself a disservice. The idea is that you only spend 70% of your after-tax income. That's for your, necess- your necessities, your, for your luxuries, everything. Only spend 70%. And then the idea is to allocate the 30% in different ways. But mostly, the most important, of course, is that 30% is going towards saving. That is what the 30% is for. There's a few different ways, though, that we can break that down and really figure out what you can do with that. And that's every and everything, that 70%. 
So let's start with one of the first things that possibly you can do with that 30%, um, which is to create a savings account. With the remaining 30%, maybe 10% of that 30 should be deposited into a savings account that you can't access unless it's a complete 100% emergency. You know, set it up so that it's truly difficult to cheat yourself because what we do is that we know in the back of our minds that we have that money, so then we're like, oh, I wanna go to the movies. And you're just gonna go in there and you're just gonna pull out 20 bucks and you're just gonna keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that, and then you're gonna you know, lose your entire savings. And it's because you just weren't harder on yourself. You didn't have a, a bigger strategy or a better plan maybe set in place. It doesn't even have to be a standard bank account though. You know, it truly doesn't. If it works better for you, like putting it under your mattress or putting it in a box somewhere that you like never see, that works too. The idea is just getting it out of your mind, putting it somewhere where you know you will not touch it. You know, maybe if you see it in your account every day when you open it, that might cause you to be like, it's there. But possibly putting it somewhere else, like physically getting the money and putting it somewhere else might be better for you. It might give you, you know, you really feel like it's not there. It's truly out of your mind. A little secret that I actually, I once heard, the difference between poor and rich. Poor people spend their money and save what's left while rich people save their money and spend what's left. That's a little food for thought. I truly love that and I need to um, remind myself of that a little more. I need to remind myself of that, of that phrase a, a lot more. <laughs> number three I would say is invest, 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 invest. Oh, I'm sorry, this is actually number two. Number two of I think that maybe the, the three things that you, can, that you can put together, allocate the, the savings towards. Um, the remaining 30%. So with the remaining 30%, maybe 10% of it can be invested. Um, there are a number of ways, though, that you can figure out how and where to invest also. You know, I know this is also a tricky subject. If you don't think that you can invest, just take a moment and truly, truly think about your skills. Think about hobbies that you partake in that, that you enjoy, that you know that you're good at. You know, maybe you can you can convert those things into profitable enterprises. This is it's what nearly every other business owner has done. They have worked around something that either interests them or something that they know that they can do, and or they found people that can do it. You know, also networking is another huge thing. It can be another part. You know, another type of investment. You can buy a product at wholesale and then sell it at, for retail prices. You know, people have been making amazing. Um, profits off of Amazon and, and things like that. Of course, we're talking about investing, so you wanna focus on that. You can purchase a piece of property as well, you know, fix it up and then flip it. You'll find many opportunities if you're looking for them, if you're truly, truly looking for them. And I wanted to take this opportunity to really share something really cool with you guys on the subject of investing. This is something that I started doing myself and I would, it's amazing, I would recommend it to anyone. It's um, the Acorns app. I'm not sure if you guys have heard about this thing, but it's really, really, really cool. What this app does is you link your bank account or a credit debit card, whatever. You can link um, any form, you know, of you know, how, however you get your money, however you you know you keep your money. You can just link your account to the application, and any time that you spend money, the remaining change goes into a stocks account. It goes into the, your Acorns account, which they allocate and they. They actually move it towards different stocks and they basically do the investing for you. But, so just to maybe break that down a little further, meaning if you spend about 150, you spend a dollar and 50 cents, that remaining 50 cents will go into that account. And so that just keeps on accumulating and accum accumulating and it's literally like completely unnoticeable. And before you know it, you got thousands of dollars in stocks. And you can also set up a reoccurring monthly debit or I'm sorry, deposit so that you can just, you know, maybe put five, ten dollars a month into that account regardless, and then um, also do the roundup. So it's a really, really cool thing, and I wanted to share that with you guys because it's really like, it's, um, it's truly amazing for people that like are scared to invest or they don't know how to start, they don't know really how to go about it, and they've heard so many tragic stories, because of course we all have, you just don't know what to do about it. And it's perfect also for people that just don't want to think about it. They just because you literally won't. You'll be spending your regular stuff, going to the grocery store, buying this, buying that, and then slowly but surely every every day you're spending a few, you know, a few cents um, towards investments, and that's just going to grow. If you just leave it alone, it's going to grow. So I think that that is truly, truly cool. And um, I'm actually I'm actually going to 
put a link down there for you guys to figure it out. You guys can just see what it's all about. See, see it for yourself. I promise you I won't steer you wrong. <laughs> and lastly, um, if, you're, you know, if you're having difficulties budgeting your money and you're trying to think of other ways um, to, to give but also, re uh, but, um, but also get back, of course, is um, a great one that a lot of, of course, successful people do is charity. And that's something that I think we really should be doing. Um, it should be taught early. That whole concept of giving to get. And I, I, truly, I truly believe in it. And I think a lot of people do as well. So I really think that there are so many different ways that we can be budgeting and we can be looking at money differently. And I know it's difficult for some of us that have already had very, I guess, very traumatizing experiences with money, but I really wanna start changing that conversation. Let's start changing that conversation. Let's make it a positive one, um, an innovating one, and let's find ways as, as to how we can save money and how we can grow businesses and how we can be those successful people that we aspire to be. So that right there was your money in business. Why can't I budget myself? And I truly, truly hope that you all go out there and look further into ways that you can budget. Find your own way, your own, your own plan. Although the 70-30 rule has always been recommended and it really does work well. Maybe yours is a little different. Maybe you need maybe more of an 80-20 or something else. Maybe, maybe that's just what you're, what's going on with you right now. But it's been proven, of course, that this is the best method. But I'm just saying that we're all different. We truly are all different, but we're all trying to get towards that one goal, which is, of course, is to love our life and to be successful and to be accessible, successful at what we love in life. So you want to um, you want to learn how to budget for sure. So we're going to move over to our next topic here, um, health and wellness. We're going to be talking about some some really interesting stuff, really interesting. Um, for years, uh, decades, really, there's been a strange notion that marijuana kills brain cells. I'm sure you've heard it. I'm sure you maybe have um, said it yourself, you know. Um, if you grew up in the United States, then I'm sure you remember D.A.R.E., right? D-A-R-E, when the police officers came into school and they told us about the harms of drugs and, you know, very, very, very helpful, of course, and we're grateful for that. But, you know, when you hear about marijuana, probably it's like what, the first one on the list, right? It's the gateway drug, and we've heard so many crazy things about it. Um, but I truly, truly believe that there comes a time when we become responsible for our thoughts, our behavior, and the information that we choose to pass on to others. Um, <clears throat> and we truly, truly must be able to separate fact from fiction. I think that that's something that's important, and especially being a part of adulthood. Um, we need to be able to separate fact from fiction and reality from what we've maybe been conditioned to think. So I want you to approach today's uh, topic with that kind of a mindset that we really truly need to question the things that we have been taught, especially when there's evidence to kind of disprove what we've been taught. But let's continue. We're in a different time. We're in a completely different time than things have been, I guess, for the past thousands of years, really, if, if you want to go, if you really want to go into it. Um, some refer to this time as like the age of Aquarius, you know, the age of knowledge, the age of knowing, the tech era, um, so many things like this. Regardless of how you view it or this, this time that we're in, with each passing day, we are defying um, what it is that we thought that we knew in the past. Con constantly, literally, consistently defying everything that we thought that we knew. And we're realizing the only reason why that's possible, the only reason why we can even, um, I guess, prove that, prove that things are different or that things are, or that our ideas were wrong, is because we're realizing that a lot of the things that we claimed to be fact in the past were really just based off of presumptions. You know, like very, very small observations. You saw it once and then now the scientists said that it's, it's true. And we really need to think about those things. We need to think about the things that we repeat when considering that they haven't been given the right amount of time, I guess, to be analyzed or to be studied, to really truly really be critiqued, but we still all think them. 
So today, 29 states and Washington, D.C. have legalized the use of cannabis in some form or fashion. And I believe that number will only increase, truly, because the health benefits of medical marijuana, ma marijuana you know, are just, it's vast. It's, it, there's so much. It's like unending, literally. Um, first, though, I think we should have just a little tiny lesson on, uh, on cannabis. We've all heard about a few of these things, THC, THC, well, CBD and CBN. But many of us really maybe have no idea what any of these things mean. We maybe have heard it and so we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna break it down for you just so that we can have a little bit of a better understanding as we move forward. So THC, all right, I'm gonna try and pronounce what the actual name is, Delta 9 Tetrahydrocannabinol. It's the main psychoactive component in marijuana buds. It mimics the action of anadamide, which is a natural occurring cannabinoid in our brain. Yes, we have cannabinoids in our body. Um, it provides certain positive health benefits, especially when combined with other cannabinoids, hence the ones in our body, um, and can cause feelings of creativity, curiosity, or excited well-being. Too much, though, too much THC can cause people to feel anxious or disoriented, you know, messed up. You know, that you've heard things like uh, paranoia when, when, people, when people, I guess, uh, get high. Um, but truly THC, of course, it, it's a relaxant. It, hel it helps you relax. And so CBN um, is cannabinol. That's what CBN stands for. It's also psychoactive, but it's much, much less. It's a much less um, psychoactive component than THC. The presence of CBN and THC, when they are together, consumed together, they reduce the feelings of anxiety. So THC, if too much THC may give you anxiety and like those, those crazy feelings, but then just adding CBN will actually reduce that anxiety and bring you back more to a mellow, relaxing state. And CBN, it promotes uninterrupted sleep. It's too much CBN can make people feel groggy or sleepy. So if you have too much of it, you'll get like really, really exhausted. And I think, honestly, I think it's the CBN that contributes to that more, well, it does contribute to more of the, co the couch lock effect. But what I'm saying is that I really think that it's due to the CBN that that whole um, couch potato, lazy, stoner, you know, concept kind of kind of comes from. Too much CBN gets you really, really tired and you're probably just gonna lay there. The couch lock effect as it's as it's known. And then lastly, the 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 um the third biggest component cannabinoid in in cannabis is C B D, which stands for cannabidiol. And it's not psychoactive at all. So it can't make you feel impaired in any way. Doesn't alter your mind, doesn't alter in any, in any way at all. The presence of CBD can alter or even reduce the psychoactive effects of THC. So it's another thing of, well, as well, like the CBN, where if it's also you know, introduced with THC, then it can kind of, it kind of just has like this counter effect against the THC, especially if you have too much. So this is great. CBD, I'm sure we've been hearing a lot of this more lately. They make CBD oil, just CBD oil. And this is amazing for patients so that they can just get the medical benefits without actually getting that high feeling, without getting that weird feeling that some of them maybe don't want to experience. So it reduces pain, prevents seizures and spasms, relieves some types of inflammation, reduces anxiety, and protects your brain, literally protects your brain because it has a neuroprotective effect. It's been used as an antipsychotic for people suffering from schizophrenia, and it's relieved some with m multiple sclerosis, epilepsy, and so much more. Literally, the list goes on. You should do more research as to all of the amazing things that it's been seen to cure or at least treat or help prevent. So that was a little bit of a breakdown for those three main cannabinoids that are found in cannabis and marijuana. There's still a lot of spectacism, though, revolving marijuana use and its benefits. But when we actually look at the science, and I mean actually look at the science behind cannabis, it seems that, that negative effects um, are like extremely difficult to confirm. They're just not there. We're seeing positive, positive, positive. 
So let's check out some of those benefits, shall we? We're gonna start, of course, with the biggest one that we've been hearing the most, which is why it's been, why this subject is even so amazing, of course, is cannabis and cancer, you know, and that whole connection there. So getting a little bit deeper into cannabinoids, cannabinoids, which refer to any group of um, related compounds that include cannabinol and the three active um, constituents of cannabis, they may very well be one of the best disease cancer-fighting treatments out there. And our bodies, they produce a compound, compound I'm sorry, called endocannabinoids. And that plays a role in many processes within the body that helps create a healthy environment. So this endocannabinoid, it really helps cleanse a lot of what's going on um, in our bodies. So when we come in contact with cannabinoids, they activate other cannabinoid receptors in our body. So it, they, they attach to each other and they work together and they help each other. Um, cannabinoids are also involved in immune system generation and regeneration. The body regenerates best when it's saturated with phytocannabinoids. And they've been known to reduce cancer cells as well as they significantly improve the immune system regeneration. It's important to note here that cannabinoids are plentiful in both hemp and cannabis. And really the only big difference between hemp and cannabis is that hemp has about 0.3% of THC, while cannabis has about 0.4% or higher. It can just have more THC. That's really the biggest difference between hemp and cannabis. Um, cannabis has been known to treat, reduce, weaken the strength of, and even cure many cancers. Um, there have been literally an abundance of successful studies at this point. We're seeing things and cures, treatments for brain cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, prostate, uh, blood cancer, oil can I'm sorry, oral cancer, liver cancer, and pancreatic cancer. And I'm sure there are so many more, so many more to come. Um, so to check out more studies, if you're interested, of course, check out more studies that, um, on Collective Evolution's article, 20 medical studies that show cannabis can be a, put, a potential cure for cancer. But that's not all. It's not just cancer. It doesn't start with cancer and it does not end with cancer. Researchers at Ohio State found certain components of cannabis to be beneficial for the aging process, the aging brain, proven to reduce brain inflammation and regenerate brain, dead brain cells. Can I just say that one more time? Literally, proven to reduce brain inflammation and regenerate dead brain cells. Take a minute and just truly think about what I just said. Truly. Because such information, it truly may come as an astonishing you know, surprise to so many of us, you know, because it's literally the exact, complete opposite of what we've always heard, what we have always been taught in regards to marijuana's effect on the brain. We've always been taught that marijuana impair, impairs the brain, the memory function, it kills brain cells. We've heard all of these crazy things and they're literally turning out to be the opposite, the exact opposite. Even more important is that cannabis is shown to be the most effective and it's even considered a key to good health when we eat it rather than when we smoke it. So that's another factor as well. I do understand that's another thing. Maybe we need to be consuming it the proper way as well Maybe that'll knock out some of these ugly um, notions about them and false, completely false notions about it. Information like this, though, is it's truly groundbreaking for um, for things like Alzheimer's, like people that have this disease, Alzheimer's. They're thought to be it's I'm sorry, Alzheimer's is thought to be um, the result of a chronically inflamed brain. So it truly might serve. Um, our government maybe to just cut the shenanigans, you know, and cease denying these human beings of their, their rights to living a healthy life and to being healthy, you know, and to not be stamped by, you know, Western's perception of a disease when we truly, truly have the resources to reverse that. I just don't think it's right. So due to that ability, you know, to regrow brain cells and to reduce brain inflammation, so, so cool. It's quite possible that marijuana will be and always has been the perfect antidote to neural degenerative diseases. It's quite possible. I mean, that's what we see with all of these studies and everything else. I mean, it's truly, truly regenerating dead brain cells. 
regenerating them, bringing them back to life, reprogramming them almost. Cannabis stands as a great example of how human, how the human mind can be conditioned to believe something that is absolutely uncertain. We had no idea that the people that said that marijuana kills your brain cells had no idea what they were saying, right? They didn't have evidence. They didn't have research done. They just said it one day and then you say it enough and then now it becomes this, um, this, this truth. Everybody just starts to believe it. And it's really irresponsible if you ask me. It's very irresponsible because we're looking to our scientists, to our military, to our governments. We're looking to them to kind of set the pace for us. You know, they let us know what's going on and we follow suit. So if they're actually telling us that this thing that can literally help us in so many different forms, from cancer to just everyday life, just, every, just aging of the brain, right? Just regenerating those dead brain cells. Just, if they can literally tell us that this thing is going to harm us when it's the one thing, you know, on this earth that can help us, that scares me a little bit. That truly scares me because these are the people, like I said, that we are looking up to. What else is it that, you know, that they're hiding, so to speak? Like always, I truly, truly encourage all of you to do more research, continue to learn, continue to grow. Don't take my word for it, seriously. Check out that, um, that article from Collective Evolution and there's so many more. Marijuana may prevent memory loss by reducing brain inflammation. Um, there are so many more articles that we can that we can look into as well, and I would encourage you to. I hope many of you um, truly have the courage to change the narrative of marijuana, change the way that it's talked about, change the way that it's perceived, and bring the facts to the table. Bring the facts. Bring the studies. Um, the less lies being spread about this amazing plant, and can I touch on that for a moment? It's a plant, right? Meaning that every other drug that it's like probably the only drug that is actually like natural, that isn't made by human beings, that isn't altered by human beings. And, you know, to, to give or take, of course. Um, but but still, I mean, that's just that's huge. That's a huge thing because we you know, we can legally drink. We can go out and we can drink all night. And that literally damages our body. It impairs our, our vision, our, our judgment. Um, I know that there are studies, of course, that also shows the damages of the brain, alcohol that it does, not to mention your liver and other organs in the body. We literally have studies proving how harmful that is for us, but that's legal. And then this plant is banned and it's amazing. It actually has curing properties, right? So to me, that's insane. You know, we can't even grow it in our backyards, but I think that th things are going to change and I'm happy about the 29 states that are finally just like accepting this change and allowing people to heal themselves the way that I believe we were intended to heal ourselves. So I think we, I would say, you know, let's do some more research before we pick a side, you know, and really, really, really consider what it is that you, that you say when it comes to anything, honestly, anything. I truly believe this is a great example, like I mentioned about you know, the human mind and how we condition ourselves and how we can literally condition ourselves to believe something that's completely false. But I think we should use this, this story in this situation as an example as to how we can change the narrative and we can do what's right. At the end of the day, we should always be thinking about when I'm passing on information, do I know what I'm talking about? Is there evidence backing what I'm saying? Am I 100% sure that it's true? Because you are you know, you're you like I like right now, I have a responsibility. If you're tuning in and listening to this, then I have to come up, you know, I have to do my research. I have to make sure that what the information that I'm passing on to you is as true as you know it possibly can be. And I think that's the way that we need to look at every single every single situation in our lives. We we need to be held responsible for the information that we pass along. All right. So we're gonna move on to our final topic today. Um on the, on the subject of our universe, free energy, uh, pseudoscience or proven reality? Let's find out. So, who is benefiting from suppressing scientific research? Hmm. Whose power and wealth is threatened by access to clean and free energy? And who has the desire to create a system where so few have so much and so many have so little? 
I want you to keep in mind those three questions as we walk through this subject of free energy. Just think about those questions. Who has more to gain? Who has more to lose? Just think about that. It's becoming more and more obvious, especially within the past um, few years or so, that Earth's dependence on fossil fuels isn't necessary, like at all. <laughs> in fact, it could possibly be harming it. You know, there's, there's some evidence leaning in that direction as well. Yet we continue to create war. We're destroying our planet, ruining Mother Nature. You know, and we're using the same, same techniques that are generating trillions of dollars to those at the top of the energy industry. It's been like this for a very long time, too long. Corporate media continues to push the idea that we are in an energy crisis, that we're approaching a severe problem due to lack of resources. Of course, another not so ironic fact is that the same shareholders that own the energy industry also own the corporate media, right? See the connection? Is it so ironic? I don't know. How can we possibly be running out of resources though? I wanna know, how can, we run, how can we be running out of resources when we have systems that can provide energy without an external input? Do you know about that? This means that these systems could run for infinity, endlessly, and they could provide energy to the entire planet without burning a single fossil fuel. Wow, truly, truly, wow. This would eliminate a large portion of your bills, your light bills, this light bill that we have right now, anything. A lot of our bills would be reduced and it would reduce the harmful effect we're having on the earth and her beautiful, beautiful environment that we need to keep clean, we need to keep beautiful. You probably have your doubts though, I, I trust me, I, tr I totally understand. And it's because you, you may have not have heard about this and you haven't heard the studies or actually physically seen the studies, but I believe that's gonna change. These concepts have been proven in hundreds of laboratories all over the world, and yet never seen the light of day. If the new energy technologies were set free worldwide, the change would be profound. It would, it would affect everybody. It would be applicable everywhere. These technologies are absolutely the most important thing that have happened in the history of the world. That was said by Dr. Brian O'Leary. He's the former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor. Even if you don't believe in the concept of free energy, also known as zero point energy, we have multiple clean energy sources that render the entire energy, I'm sorry, entire energy industry obsolete. It's out there. Whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, it is happening, it's out there. and. I would love to go over some research with you. Um, our first, our first uh, research study, um, actually a lot of what we're gonna discuss with these two, um, I'm gonna give you two different topics here, or two different studies, just to give you guys a little bit more of an understanding of uh, what free energy is and how they're testing it and how we know it's possible and the results that we're getting. You can see um, a lot of these. Um, on Breakthrough Every, I'm sorry, Breakthrough Energy Movement uh, Conference. You can look into that further by visiting global BEM, Breakthrough Energy Movement, uh, dot com. Things like the uh, Casimir effect is a proven example of how free energy um, truly just cannot be debunked. It, it can't be debunked because we have things like the Casimir effect. It illustrates zero point or vacuum state energy, which predicts that two metal, um, metal plates close together attract each other due to an Im imbalance in the quantum fluctuations. You can see a visual demonstration. This is really cool. I really, really um, suggest you guys watch this. You can see a visual demonstration on YouTube. The link should be below, um, or you can just search quantum levitation demonstration at North Museum. You can just search that at YouTube and you should find it. It should be the first video. It's a video by Lancaster Online. Shouldn't be hard to find. The video is truly, truly intriguing. It's so cool. And it proves that we're beginning to see these concepts are not just theoretical. They're actually quite practical. And I'm telling you, they're being done everywhere right now. And that was just number one. Number two, another study 
a paper published in the journal Foundations of Physics uh, Letters. This was in August 2001. It shows that the principles of general relativity can be used to explain the principles of the motionless electromagnetic generator, MEG. These, I'm sorry, this device takes electromagnetic energy from curved space-time and outputs about 20 times more energy than inputted. Meaning, they're putting in electromagnetic, um, you know, energy, and it's actually, you know, spewing out 20 times more energy than they're putting in. Awesome. The fact that these machines exist is astonishing. Like, the fact that that is even possible is amazing. It's even more astonishing, though, that they're not being implemented worldwide right now, right? It's crazy that this isn't, you know, the biggest story right now. Like, these aren't, that things aren't changing for the better. <clears throat> it would completely wipe out the entire industry, the energy industry. So we understand that there are some issues. Nobody would have to pay light bills. You wouldn't have to pay bills anymore, actually, because everything would be free. And it would eradicate poverty at an exponential level, like huge. And isn't that what we want? Isn't that exactly what we want, though? We want all of those things to enjoy our life, to not pay these crazy bills um, when this is our planet. You know, it's my planet just as much as it's your planet. It's your planet just as much as it's my planet. Why am I paying you for the resources that, you know, are, are, are on this planet? It's kind of all kind. It's all kinds of crazy to me. Who's to say really, though, considering that this information is truly not new or foreign to humanity? It's not new. These are things that have been said for a very, very long time. Um, I know there were connections between Tesla's, you know, studies and, and free energy. There is significant evidence. Um, here's a quote by Dr. Theodore C. Uh, Loader uh, III, which is kind of tying into what I just said. There's a significant evidence that scientists, since Tesla have known about this energy, but that its existence and potential use has been discouraged and indeed suppressed over the past half century or more. It's true. Now, <clears throat> these are just two examples, you know, of how many, many, many research papers, experiments, and these studies that have been done on free energy. It's truly amazing, and I truly, truly hope that more of these stories come to light and that more of these things are talked about and we truly, truly see a shift. I want to see that shift. And I know that you probably want to see that shift on like a grander global scale, like everyone. There are people in every country, every part of the world that could truly, truly benefit from this. Not only benefit from this information and the resources, but it's possible their lives depend on it. You know, we, we really, like I said, we have a responsibility to do what's right. So truly, I mean, going back to those three questions, Who's really benefiting from suppressing this information? Truly, I mean, whose power and wealth is threatened by accessing clean and free energy? Who has the desire to create a system where so few have so much and so many have so little? I think we know the answer to this and I think that it truly possibly takes all of us just knowing this information. Because what you don't know is something that they can use against you. If we never had the understanding um, of free energy, if we didn't know about it, the rest of us, and just maybe the 1% understood it, it's true, why would, they, why would they go out of their way to educate us on something that possibly threatens them, right? That's why I truly believe that it is our responsibility to learn. It's our responsibility to, to try and get in those meetings, to try to figure out what's going on with our government and to see what's going on behind closed doors because we can't leave it up to them. We can't just leave it up. And I'm not saying, you know, there's something wrong with them or them personally. I just mean we can't leave it up to anyone. You, you can't leave the fate of your life up in someone else's hands. I think it's irresponsible. So you need to take, your, take um, control of your own life and do the research, truly. Look into um, the free energy and seriously watch that video from Lancaster Online. You will be blown away by some of the things that they're doing. So, so cool. Thanks so much for joining us here. I am Vanessa. You are watching Believe. Thanks again so much. Please subscribe. You can watch us at believe.love as well as youtube.com forward slash believe loves you. Um, our Apple users, check out believeitunes.com and for Android users, believeandroid.com. Bye and until next time.